Yeah, thinking about this question, I, I kind of thought back to my early 20s um, and at which time I think I went on quite a well-trodden path of uh, loving bell hooks and reading Judith Butler. And yeah, really kind of, I remember it being such an amazing moment, kind of making those links for the first time between our internal lives and the world around us and struggles for liberation and that being like, I think, yeah, a lot of young, I don't know, for instance, like, yeah, young feminists go on that journey and it being like a really memorable time. So it was kind of nice thinking back to that for the question. Um, and around that time also I did I did a, a master's thesis on romantic love and neoliberalism. And I was really into this book called Consuming the Romantic Utopia, Love and the Cultural Contradictions of Capitalism by Eva Illu. Um, I haven't read it since then. I, I yeah, but I remember being really impacted by it. Um, I believe she has a new book out too. And yeah, beyond that also like literature and literary nonfiction, um, I found really elucidating around the personal being political and rather cliched. I was so into Anais Nin, um, The Diaries, Henry and June, and I had this um, really worn book called A Woman Speaks, which I uh, pulled out for like looking looking at my books for this question. And it's a collection of her lectures and interviews. Um, I don't even know how it stands up because I yeah haven't opened it for over 10 years, but I remember it being really impactful on this stuff. And I think I would recommend it. But yeah, I as I said, I haven't read it for 10 years. <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely think it has. Um, I'm not sure if, like, yeah, dating apps specifically, if I, if I think that they've made like romantic forms of intimacy inherently worse or better, but I definitely think that they've distilled the worst aspects of romance under capitalism, um, including by just really intensifying the commodification of ourselves and others uh, along discriminatory lines, um, for example. And yeah, I suppose like on the one hand written into the apps and yeah, the way that they work as a form of digital capital is like kind of an inherent disposability, um, vagueness in these connections. And a lot of people report feeling, you know, a lack of commitment from relationships that might arise from dating apps and which yeah certainly kind of mirrors neoliberal precarity and liquidity of life um but also I, I think kind of the other side of that is there's something uh really utilitarian about the way that we uh form or attempt to form relationships via apps that's distinctly unromantic um the way we have to really be very specific about what are you looking for? Who are you? What are your criteria? Um, and then these apps kind of siphon us off into algorithmic production lines according to what boxes we tick. Um, and of course, this this has its uses in terms of helping us meet people that potentially could be more compatible. But I also think it has a further commodifying, objectifying impact on ourselves and our relationships um, because of the way it assumes this individualistic capitalist logic that we that we all possess or should strive to possess this complete self-knowledge um complete self-actualization as opposed to the more potentially anti-capitalist idea that we can only exist in relation to each other um you know we we might only know what we want and who we are in relation to each other and yeah it's kind of scary maybe how how if we are forming some of our most intimate bonds uh on via apps how um the algorithms might block us from meeting certain people um and yeah what people are trapped behind the algorithm because of certain boxes we've ticked in this kind of process of distillation of trying to brand ourselves um so yeah, I suppose the, the one thing is that 
the book is really broad and mm. what became very apparent writing it is I mean it's kind of intuitive but intimacy is everything and all of our liberation struggles are in one way or another about intimacy about because they're about care how we care for each other um how we exist together so I found it hard to kind of pick a a, a group um but yeah you know all in terms of people you know marginalized groups are those most excluded from and or harmed by dominant modes of intimate life under capitalism which is a lot of different people um in a lot of different ways to different extents um but to yeah pull out some examples uh supporting trans queer and sex worker rights groups uh i feel is especially urgent in this respect um and to yeah name some examples in the UK, the Transgender Action Block, Lesbians and Gays Support the Migrants, and the Sex Worker Advocacy and Resistance Movement. Um, and yeah, aside from kind of that kind of political organizing, I also think potentially, yeah, one of the most relevant um, examples of action that people could take is organizing in their local communities, um, building mutual aid networks and networks of care, um, for example, local food co-ops. Um, there's a model called the Cooperation Town model, um, local childcare co-ops. Um, I think, yeah, in terms of political organizing, getting to know our neighbors is, is one of the most powerful things we can do and that that does percolate upwards into power um, and the ability to resist, um, yeah, 